welcome to all for united wfc we are live and it is going to be um well brilliant for you guys really to be honest with you because uh, i've calmed down since monday um and i am quite content and happy here and as you can see we've got the red brothers uh down on this side here so we shall see how we get on today this little column of red um it's really good to have you all in nice to see sang already in the chat uh, as well as lanzel mickey uh, and max uh, and connor i think might be in there somewhere as well but really nice to have you all. why was i heat this is a great question why was i heated on monday well i was heated on, heating on. I, I, yes i did i wish i did have the heat and i've got none of that at the moment um but yes we um we had a big conversation on Monday and lots of people had their opinions. And as we've said before on this show, it is all about your opinions. So you will not be censored. Uh, I might look at you distastefully. I might disagree entirely with what you said, but isn't that the way the world works? None of us are all going to think the same way about everything. So all opinions are valid and we want them all on this show. Whatever you're thinking, come and tell us. As long as you're not being rude, I don't really care throw it out there that's your opinion go for it so as you would have seen from the thumbnail that we looked at oh early drops out again <laughs> it's not interested in having a debate no not doing it it's the second time it's happened to her bless her um <clears throat> i agree with you mickey i think monday's it was amazing i mean it lasted an hour and 40 minutes it lasted longer than the actual match um and genuinely think it could have uh, could have carried on longer could have done extra time and penalties on that one um, but you know what we like with penalties, so it probably wouldn't have ended up too good if we got to that bit. So we'd like to leave you wanting more. Um, but as we saw from the thumbnail, there's a lot that we're looking at. We're measuring progress under Mark Skinner. That's where we're sort of taking it this time. Um, and whether or not we're better than we were last season. So also whether or not we're better than we were with Casey Stoney. So I took it upon myself to have a little look at this season and last season, the first six games. Um, and the first six games of last season, when Mark Skinner came in and he took on Casey Stoney's side, he won his first two games against Redden and Leicester, lost to Chelsea 6-1, which we might remember, got the win against Birmingham, and then began our little issues where we drew 2-2 with City and then won all with Spurs. So we only got 11 points at the beginning of last season. <clears throat> this season at the beginning, obviously, we've got 15. Effectively, we lost to Chelsea just like we did last year, but with a different differential. And the two draws, we turned into wins. However, the two draws were against City and Spurs. So, effectively, what we're getting at with the start of our show today is that's, that's the facts. That's how it was at the beginning of last season. That's how it is this season. That's the fact. So, you could argue that teams are different. Instead, we're going to see what everybody else thinks about that fact. So, Shane, do you think, simple question, do you see progress from this season, from last season? Yes. Um, simply put, because so, although we've played a lot of teams that on paper we should be beating, and on paper most people would go, yes, you will win, I think... <laughs> It's the manner of the way we've won. You know, a lot of times last year, and then they still apply this season as well, by the way, but there was a lot of times last year where we, we talk about are we being clinical enough? Are, you know, we, are we taking our chances? And it's a common phrase. It's been there for four and a half years now, and it probably will never go away. It will always be a topic. But you look particularly at the Reading game, Brighton game, by half time we're away with it. So the second half comes, and yes, you want us to go out. You want us to score another four goals, another five goals. You want to hit double figures against these teams. It doesn't mean you have to. And th that's where I think there's an obvious improvement. Last season, we we, we could leave it late. You know, we, we weren't absolutely going hammer and tongue at these teams. We, we'd get one, and we'd all be in the stands going please don't sit on this, please don't go, go and get another goal, please go and get another goal. Uh, and that other goal might come later in the game, by which point then we're just sort of sighing with relief. At this point we get into half time and we're going, okay, game's done, go and enjoy yourselves. So I mean, you don't have to score more goals, it'd be nice if we did, but we don't have to. 
and, and that's a luxurious position to be in when you don't have to go out and absolutely go for it because to a degree the game's already won so there's an obvious improvement there is a flip side to it in the sense that our first big real test was this Sunday against Chelsea. Last season, we didn't lose to any team below us, but we lost to teams above us. It was the draws that knackered us. Chelsea are our first big test this season, and to put it simply, we failed that test. We still lost. Now, the game was very different to last season. Last season, Chelsea absolutely bulldozed us to the degree where we're playing for damage limitation in the second half. Chelsea did to us last season what we did to Reading this season in the first half. So in, in that context, we improved in the sense that we gave Chelsea more of a game out of it. And the game was ultimately one on who made more mistakes. We made three, Chelsea punished us three times. They made one, we got them. But they made less mistakes than we did. That's why they ended up winning that game. Um, so yeah, the, there's, there's still a lot of improvement to come, hopefully, that needs to come. But there is an improvement, I think. Excellent. OK. Well, Eddie, you are alive again. You're back with us. I don't know if that's your third device. We've tried it on the tablet. We've tried it on the laptop. We've tried it on the phone now. I don't know what's left to go with. Um, but yes, I'm sure you'll be fine. Um, make sure you unmute yourself and let us know. Do you think there has been progress under Mark Skinner from last season? Yeah, of course, Lee. I can't argue with the fact how well we've done this season so far. We won like five out of five games. No, I think it was that. Um, clean sheets. Yeah, we smashed that. Right, like, um, like what's just been said, these tough these um games like with the teams above us, we just end up like I don't know, just losing them. And obviously, we wanted to prove ourselves this season that. We, we can beat the best. And I, I just think that game on Sunday, like I always say, they always come out second half stronger than ever. And that's what they did. First half, we did brilliantly to keep it a nil-nil. But even a one-nil would just do us um, on Sunday. It would have just done us. Um, obviously, we we were all frustrated. We stood there when all the goals went in in the end. But obviously, you could see how frustrated Mary was. Because she wanted to keep a clean sheet again. But, yeah, there is progress in the mark, I think. Obviously, not against these tough te- like good teams, but it's Arsenal, Arsenal next. If we can get three points against them, then we are doing something right. I know they've got some players out. That's an advantage to us, really. So we, we can we can do, get three points at the game. Even just a one name, that will do us. So... Yeah, I think he's, he's doing all right so far this season. Just time will tell, really, though, against the big big teams. I think you're right. Time will tell for certain. And I think the big thing uh, about that game on Sunday was, as you said, disappointment. And it was disappointment because, obviously, the goals had gone in and we were sat there knowing that we could have done better uh, and that we could have had a, a better result had we not... Push the self disrupt button, I suppose, really, is the, is the best way I can put it. Now, I've saved the best till last on this one because, uh, <clears throat> as you're all aware, on Monday, Balderdash and Poppycock were the words that I used. Balderdash and Poppycock. That's what I said to Marty. Um, Marty has a different view to me, and that's absolutely fine. So, I thought it only fair, seeing as how I'd got off onto my high horse, which you should all be impressed with, really, whenever I get onto a high horse. I'm only five foot two. It's not easy to get on there, you know. So when I finally got there, uh, it's time for Marty now to have her right to reply. So Marty, Mark Skinner, progress. I know you're not hugely behind that, but why not give us a bit more context as to what you were saying in the chat last week and uh, on Monday, sorry, and your thoughts. Uh, yes, I think that um, they've progressed. Uh, they've made progress since last season. There was seriously a game that could have been a draw and that wasn't, uh, that they ended up you know, we held to win. The question I think that should be asked is, has the club improved enough to be able to challenge the top three? And that's something that against Chelsea, which Chelsea, if you look at Chelsea this season versus last season, they can be beat. 
they can be beat better this year than last year. And if you look at, you know, I rewatched the match again this morning. Okay. Um, and there were a number of defensive errors on both sides. Okay. Both sides. And we took advantage of it. That was the Russo goal. And we nearly took advantage of it with Tooney. Okay. Like Tooney almost got that second goal. Um, in fact, it would have been like, I think the first goal, cause it was really early on in the first period, in the first set half. Uh, but there were a number of defensive errors on our part where that's the same thing I saw last year. Okay. That stuff just needs to be cleaned up. You can get away with that on the likes of, you know, uh, lesser, but you can't get away with it in the likes of Chelsea, Arsenal or city. Okay. City early on this year. You know, they had so many new players and they're just trying to get their acts together. But now they've been rolling. I mean, Bunny Shaw scored like what? She's up to like nearly double digits in, in, in goal scoring. And she's on her way to, to Golden Boot this season. Um, Arsenal, yeah, they've had a lot of hits in terms of injuries. But their backups are as good as their first liners. So... You know, it's it's you'd have to decimate the team and then they turn around and put on a 16 year old that looks like a speedy Lauren James out there. OK, so um, I, I wouldn't underestimate what Arsenal's going to want, what Arsenal's going to do, plus the, the fact that it's going to be away at the Emirates. OK, that's significant. Um, so, yeah, simple answer. Sure, you've improved. We've improved. OK, that that goes. He's done. He's done a fairly good job of not decimating the team. OK, that's cool. But has he done a well enough job that he can beat Chelsea? At the moment, we would say probably not <laughs> because we didn't. <laughs> I'm all about the facts. All about the facts. Yeah. Very calm and very measured there, Marty. I was expecting we don't a finger wagon and all sort of it. We simply don't have the speed to compete against them. We don't. We don't have the speed in the midfield. We have the speed on the sides. And the fact that Ona and, and Garcia were not available really hurt us. And I think that's a really good point. And one that wasn't brought up really much on Monday was the fact that we were missing players. We were in a situation where we weren't putting out the side that that you would argue that Mark Skinner would want to, to put out as his first eleven. But absolutely, the depth is something that we are going to come back to. And, and again, this game against Arsenal, it's going to be really important. But... Shane, just coming back to you, this game against Arsenal now, do you think there is added pressure? Because as Marty says, City will, you would think, get to a point where there will be a bit of clicking. And although they have lost a lot of players who you would consider to be potentially household names, they're still potentially going to be in and around that area. Do you feel that this game against Arsenal now takes on more importance because of the fact that we didn't beat Chelsea or not? Absolutely, it does. Um, but I, I, I don't think... Well, yeah, let me backtrack. I, I don't think it takes added importance because we've lost Chelsea. It's That's a contributory factor, but I think there was added importance anyway because Arsenal are another one of the big three that we've beaten once in the league the other time being obviously a cup game last season but last season we went to their place in the league took the lead they're down to 10 and we did our usual party trick of have a goal equalize get a point have it on us so just, i don't think we can look at arsenal in the sense of there's more pressure because we've lost to chelsea because chelsea's one test, Chelsea's a completely different test. It's a different hurdle that we've still got to jump over. Arsenal isn't necessarily a hurdle that we haven't jumped over before because we have. We have beat Arsenal before. Obviously, completely different circumstance, completely different season, completely different teams. The fact that it's at the Emirates this time gives a different dynamic, completely different kind of pitch to where Arsenal usually play and where we're used to playing them. Um, and you know, as I, they're the only team now with a hundred percent record, so they're the ones with the target on the backs. We are still, to a degree, the underdog in this game. And as long as we don't 
pay them too much respect in that regard. You know, we, we don't want to go here, have the ball, you play your game. We've got to show what we can do. If we're going to start consistently beating these teams that have previously been the ones above us, we've got to almost have a bit of arrogance and not to the point where we're going on paper, we're going to smash Arsenal because on paper we're not. And in reality, we're probably not. Arsenal are going to have to have a really bad off day if we're going to absolutely leather them. But you don't have to leather a team to outplay them or to just have a good game in general and get a good win out of it. Do you know what I mean? Like a 2-0. You can have a really good game and only win 2-0. You can have a really poor game and win 3-0, 4-0 sometimes. It's, you know, this is how football works in its mysterious ways. So, yeah, there's added pressure, but not because of Chelsea for me. It's just added pressure. It's a completely different environment, playing them at the Emirates. You know, I'm not sure in the league if they've ever lost their... Obviously, they've played there before. <laughs> We've had opportunities to. I know they've played Tottenham there a couple of times and beat them quite comfortably. But yeah, it's it's one of those we can wait and see, and hopefully we 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 get another one in the win column on that, and we can end their hundred percent record. Well, it would be the thing to do. You know, if there's one thing Man United like to do, it's to break other people's records. Um, we'll never forget the time they thought they were going fifty unbeaten uh, until Wayne Rooney stepped up and saw to that. Um, what I wanted to ask you, Ellie, with this one is that, obviously, last season, Arsenal were actually a side that we did, I think, better against than potentially any other of the top three. Um, City just seemed to pip us at the post, or more often than not, Chelsea were just the better side last season. But Arsenal, we had the Conti Cup game, we beat them uh, 1-0 in that one, <clears throat> one of the greatest days I've ever had. Um, but even the away game in the league at Boreham Wood, we were 1-0 up. And really, they scored from, I wouldn't say their only chance, but certainly their best chance. Um, they cut us open once and, and scored a goal from it. Would you feel, as Sang and um, Shane have said, about confidence here rather than not arrogance, would you feel confident, even though Arsenal are unbeaten, that we could go there to the Emirates and get a result? Yeah, but this is what I say. I see this international break now. It it do, does the players good, I think, now. Because we, we, they're going into the international break, basically we got beat off Chelsea. So that'll give them the, the determination to come, come back to beat Arsenal at the Emirates. And like you say, it's about confidence. Because imagine in front of the Emirates, having all the all, uh, United fans there. They know we bring a good away, away crowd. So beating them there, it would just boost the confidence because we really do need to beat them, I think, now. The next game, otherwise, I think the table will look a bit a bit rubbish now in the end because obviously we're like first and second and now I think we're like fourth. Um, so, yeah, we need to get back up there. I know it's too late, in, too early in the season, I know, but we really need to start beating these big teams. So... If we do it, if we do it at the Emirates in front of all their fans, and I think they've got a record now, aren't they? So we just need to get back up there and just get the points back on the table. Because I don't know, I was just gutted about with the loss, but yeah, it's about time we beat Arsenal properly. Because like you said, that it was just never ever at the back of the goal they scored. Because I thought that game was brilliant. We had the ball the most, I think. And then, yeah, it's just Evans at the back, I think, that we need to work on. Because even in that Chelsea game, it's all, all the back at Evers, like the defenders and then Mary. That's what we we need to work on the most, I think, for this game coming up. It's a great point here from Mickey as well. 100%, a lot of our players have been called up for international duty. We've got half of the Lionesses, I think, in our, uh, in our squad as well. Uh, and they're the European champions. So... Um, I think there's a lot to, to say there. And we mentioned about the defence and the fact that we're waiting for Honor to return and and hopefully that would bring a little bit more stability back to it with uh, a few more square pegs in square holes in that respect. But, <clears throat> Marty, when it comes to looking at Arsenal, what what would you say for, for that one? Do you, do you fear for us against Arsenal? Again, we're talking about Skinner and his progress. You know, he, he got, like I say, a draw and a win and a loss I think, against Arsenal last season. 
So, you know, do you, do you see us being able to play that out again or or not? What's your mystic crystal ball telling you uh, about the game against Arsenal? Don't forget to unmute, otherwise we can't hear all of the words that come out of your mouth, which we really want to hear today. There we go. Yep. Do that every time. Wouldn't be me if it wasn't. The best um, thing was, Marty, I knew you were going to do it. I could see you were about to talk. I'm like, she's going to do it, but I'll let her do it before I'd stop her. <laughs> Thanks, Barry. Um, I think I, I think both Ellie and Shane are right. Um, we uh, did well against Arsenal last year in terms of taking points off of them. We beat them the year before, um, early on. I remember that. Uh, the key is, is just as Mark came in as a new uh, manager, so did Edeval. Okay, so did Jonas. Uh, so his first year was last year. And he just missed. If they had lost to Birmingham, they would have won the league last year. We all know that. Okay, I mean, they had some they had some draws that were really silly. And they got into a very, very tired zone as he's trying to figure things out, just like Mark was trying to figure things out. Okay, we ended up with a lot more draws than we should have. Um, I do think that uh, they have a lot of injuries. Okay, um, yes, they're at the Emirates. They play very tough at the Emirates, as far as I'm aware. Uh, and because they're injuries, yeah, they're a little, they've got people playing out of position. They're still key players, plus the fact they're coming off international break. And I hate to say this, but actually it's sort of happy to say this, is but Sweden's playing Australia in Australia. So you can just count the number of Swedes and the number of Australians that are on that team. So when they're coming back, it's not like they're going to be top notch, okay, in terms of being able to play. Plus, they've got a whole, they're going to be playing Juventus back to back, okay, coming up. So they're going to be playing every three to four days for like the next couple of weeks up until Christmas. Um, so if we have an opportunity to beat, uh, Arsenal, it'd be that match before they can get their act together. That that would be, you know, but we need speed. Even, even with their backups off the bench, they still have more speed, more quick touch passing. They can do the press and the way they play their offense, defense transition is like nothing else in the rest of the league right now. It's the way Chelsea was playing last season that they're not playing this season. I'm not sure what's going on. I know they they substituted in a lot of they got a lot of new signings and maybe they just haven't figured their act out, okay? But Arsenal presses, they play a high line, they attack constantly, and then they pause and for every ball that's going into their end They've got at least three people on you before you know what's happening. So the fact that our midfield is so slow in terms of passing the ball out of the back, okay? Like you got, you've got the two uh, center halves, and then you've got the outside backers, right? I guess they're fullbacks, right? And they're passing, and Katie Zellum's coming in to be the, the dish off. And there were at least three to four times in the Chelsea game alone that those passes were just not quick. It wasn't a quick touch. And because it wasn't a quick touch, the Chelsea defender could come in and pick it off. Okay. It wasn't, I mean, yeah, there were a couple errors in the past, could have been better and things like that, but they just put an enormous amount of pressure on you. But with regards to um, that worries me. With regards to Zellen, though, Marty. Um <clears throat> we, we've said before we've had Mark Henry on the show and I think he agrees with me on this one or rather I agree with him. I'm sure he was the one who said it. I think Zellum plays sort of the quarterback role. And so do you think that sometimes... Wait, wait, say that again? Plays the quarterback role. You should know what that is. It's your game. Uh, quarterbacks in football. Yeah, well, um, what we play? I, I would <laughs> put her more as a keystone. You know, she's the keystone player in the middle for the team and she's being basically the director. Okay. Correct, exactly, which is what the quarterback would do in the American football. So, but when they get the ball, yeah. sometimes okay. they will go for the quick okay. pass. They know immediately where they're going. Sometimes right. they have to stop, scan the field. So, all I'm asking with that is do you think that's a fair comparison? Do you think that whether it be Zellen, whether it be Lad, do you think there is a place for that in a football team 
where you have a player who's going to be calm, composed on the ball, and then has a look to see what's available in order to try and progress the ball forward, um, whether that be quick or slow or a mixture, is it kind of where I'm trying to progress your point to. Do I think that Manchester United would benefit from having a player that is the controlling player that's directing everything, such as the Kira Walsh or the Kim Little or the Bamadi player type? Absolutely. The problem that I have with Katie Zellman, as much as she's a very, very good player, is she's too slow on the ball and passing. She takes too much time. She needs too much time. If you press her, you can steal the ball and you can pick it off. I got no problems with Katie Zellman as a player. She's a very, very good player. But she needs to be faster. And I'm not exactly sure if that's something that she can learn, work toward, um, gain in, you know, gain in the future. But it needs to be done because international play and top three in the WSL, you need a quicker, you need quicker feet. You need to be able to control the ball and you need to be able to be one touch passing. And that's not Katie's own. So Shane, to move in that point on in a bit further. Opinion, well. Sorry? In my opinion, I'm quite sure there'll be thousands of people arguing with me and have a different opinion of her. But in my opinion, that is what, that's what I've seen. And that's what I've noticed. <clears throat> that's fine. As we've said, this is all about opinions. But what I was going to ask Shane to, to progress that with was, would you put, <clears throat> you say that Marty says, Katie Zellum too slow on the ball. Do you think that it would be a fair comment to say that that's maybe not always all on Katie and that actually what would happen with that is that there needs to be a bit of a progression as a whole squad so that Katie is more clear as to where these new players are going to run to so that she's more likely to be able to put those in. Because I know having been to a few of the games with you as well, we've seen the balls go far too far and we think, who, who on earth is that to? We're playing like to the invisible woman. Um, and it's because maybe they've anticipated someone's going to go where they haven't. Do you think that sometimes it can be a bit of that and that that's why Katie takes a bit longer? Or do you agree with Marty and think that actually she's just a player who needs that time and that if she's not given it, then she she won't be as effective? They're both, really. Um, I, I think a lot of it can probably come down to whatever happens on the training pitch. Um, you know, sometimes... Uh, yeah, I don't know what happens in the training session, so I, I can't say this is what they do or don't do. But from a simplistic viewpoint, it's almost one of those situations you, you have to do repeatedly. If you do something enough times, it becomes second nature. So, And that's how you build relationships on the pitch. That's how you get, you know, when you've got a front two, that's how they end up knowing where they are without looking. Cole and York, brilliant at it because they would have put time into it on the training pitch. If So in our example, if we're on the training pitch, if Kate is being fed a ball from a defender and she's got a second, maybe two seconds tops to get a pass away, she's got time to turn and then the ball's got to go. Who's running? Is it one of the wingers? Is it centre forward? Is it another midfielder? That, that's, and again, like I said, I don't know if this happens in training, I don't know if it doesn't, but that, that's how you can improve on, on maybe what we're seeing and what Marty's referring to, right, in terms of is Katie too slow on the ball. Again, I think that links to what you, the point you've made as well, Barry, that is she too, I don't like saying too slow, but I, I'd probably first call it casual and calm. Katie, I always see, is a very calm player, but sometimes can be too calm. And I think that's where the slowness comes into it because you think you're going to get all this time in the world on the ball, which in the championship when we were there, we had that. And that's purely a calibre of opposition. We were the only professional team in a semi-professional league. You step up as a WSL, that changes. You play the likes of Chelsea, Arsenal, Man City. They are not going to give you a second to breathe. So you have to adapt to that. And the only way you can do that is by training for it. So if we're not doing that in training, that's not going to be helping us. And th this is where, I guess, from a, a management coaching point of view, that they, if they're not seeing it from the players themselves, they've got to be telling the players this. They make the training sessions, so they've got to put this into practice, put players in situations where they get used to this happening, so it becomes second nature in an actual real game scenario. 
in terms of players making runs, I, I, I can't say when, but I know I've pointed it out a few times about this. I've seen so many times where Katie, or not just Katie, let, let's not pretend she's the only midfielder we've got. There's others who will look up and they're looking for a pass and the pass isn't there. And then your only option then is to go to the player next year because they're free or to go back a step and almost recycle that process. And if you try and recycle that process too many times, you get bored of doing it, so you stop doing it. And then you either bypass your midfield and you look to your wingers, which is typically what we end up doing because we rely so much on our wide play. Mm-hmm. Spoiler, if you're going to play wide, do you need people making runs into the box? That's my favourite phrase at a game, isn't it? Get in the box. Because we rarely do it. We have all this attacking talent and people who have the ability to play these killer passes but rarely do it. So this isn't just, I don't think, can be pinned on one player. This is a team thing. It's a team mentality. It's a team routine, if you want to call it that. We've just got to get used to having to do it to be able to do it when it counts. Yeah, very true. So... Uh, I'm using my maths, Marty, so Charlie will be very, very pl- uh, proud of me. Uh, but the way I count it, there was at least three people in the chat so far that have agreed with you. Uh, being Titus there, uh, he agreed with you. Uh, Sang agreed with you, although I am 79.6% sure he's done that just to wind me up. Um, <laughs> uh, and then there was somebody else. There we go, Chris. He had agreed with you as well, saying... Uh, I presume what she means that he means there is that Katie loses the ball quite often, and not you personally, because uh, that would be a bit harsh. Um, but Ellie, and also there was somebody else I wanted to. Where is he? Now listen, if you're sat there watching, Connor, that's fine. But giving it all this butt going back to the question, it's my fans for him. And if I want to move the question on to something that's been brought up relevant to my guest, then I shall do so, sir. But if you wish to return to the question, feel free. Um, Ellie. I wanted to ask you whether you agreed with, with what's been said by both Marty and Shane. And, and the idea, as they were talking about it, about being a bit quicker with the passes, from the Chelsea game, the one that stuck out for me was their second goal. If you're talking about how quick it can go, the ball was in defence. Before you know it, it had been lofted over the top. They're straight through on goal. Our defenders are chasing back, doing their very best, pointing at players. Uh, Lauren James steps in and it's, it's no more than 10 seconds from back to front and a goal. Do you feel that, that we have that? I mean, obviously, Katie's not a defender, but do, do you think that this is what Marty's talking about in terms of having that quicker ball and that quicker option every now and again to try and catch out the defenders? Because we've certainly got the pace up front for people to be able to to do that, don't you think? Yeah, of course we do. And I think I actually agree this time. But yeah, Katie is a bit slow because I even noticed that in the Chelsea game, like, whenever she got the ball, she didn't, make passes quick, like, she's just, um, like Jane said, she's just always so, so calm, and you'd, we'd, I don't know how to explain it, but we don't need someone that calm in a big game like that, because like you said, we've got um such good fast forwards and everything, but yeah, I'm okay, she's a bit slow in, like, bigger games, and, like, she's just, like, she's got, like, the world, world off her shoulders in these big games, because, even I've seen it. She's just really slow and she doesn't pass the ball quick, I don't think. She likes to keep an hold of the ball for like a minute or something and then that, that's it then. When she, when they get it in the big teams, that's it, they go for it. And then, like you just said, the defenders are back chasing, back chasing the ball and then that's where the panic mode starts. Right? Like, oh yeah, they, they've got it now, they're going to score and that's what they did. That's what I mean. We just need fast, fast players. Kate's just too slow on the ball sometimes, and I will, I will say that which she is sometimes. Well, I think you're right. And with a few people saying we don't try that ball over the top quite enough, and I think certainly this season we haven't as much. Um, there's a good point here from Yehuda that he made here, uh, saying that opposition players target Zelen when she's the ball, so that means you're exposed more when she loses it. And also, we can't build good attacking plays like we want. Shane, would you go along with that? This, yes and no. This kind of goes back to the point I'm making about team and you know 
this week what it works as a team. If the opposition are targeting Katie that much, we can't then be blaming Katie that she's been hounded on the ball and is therefore a bit slower than she'd like to, than we'd like her to be, to get a pass off or to get a forward pass off even. If she's getting hounded as a team, we've got to recognise that. And not just always give it to Katie because that's what either they're told to do or because they think that's what they've got to do. That's where you've got to start using your brains and say, well, if Katie's always getting absolutely mullered the second she gets a ball, give her 10 minutes off. Do you know what I mean? Pass around her. There's more than just Katie's element in that midfield. And this is where I think Katie can come in for a lot of the criticism sometimes when actually there's very little she can do about it. I'm not saying for one second Katie's faultless because no player is faultless at all. But because she's such a focal point in the midfield, she's the focal point of the criticism that the midfield gets because she probably gets the hardest task of being the one that's got to turn on the ball and lay it off. And she will be the one that gets targeted. So as a team, we've got to recognise that that happens and navigate it. And then you'll start to see better results. And maybe then the other team will give up on badgering Katie because she's not getting the ball. At which point you revert and you go, right, Katie, you have it now. She's going to turn, suddenly go, oh my God, I've got all this space to play into. Lay the ball off. We get a chance. We score a goal. Not as simple as that, obviously, but it just puts it into perspective, I think. Fair point. So... <clears throat> I'm just about to throw something along the bottom here. These were the next four games that we played last season. If my magic works. There we go. So this is what happened last season. Okay. So last season, after that draw to Spurs, we went on to draw against Everton. We then lost to Arsenal 2-0. We beat Brighton 2-0, and then we beat Aston Villa 5-0. Oh, those were the days. Um, I'm going to carry on with that ticket because there was something that I wanted to add to it anyway. Marty just poked me and let me know that she had something to add on the previous topic. So I'm just going to bring Marty in quickly to, to finish off with what she wanted to add on there whilst I complete my little ticker, and then we can move on to the next bit. That's all good. So, yes, go for it, Marty. Okay. Um, my point was, <laughs> thank you. Uh, my point was is someone came up and said that, uh, you know, Katie should be a uh, controlling midfielder, right? Uh, that's uh, the, the person who uh, dishes the ball out to everybody and controls everything. That is something that I believe looking at how Mark has, has uh, coached the team since when he came in, that's what he wants. Okay. I'm just not sure Katie has the skill set for it. Uh, the reason I say this is because I don't remember Katie driving with the ball at her feet through the middle or be able to control the ball through the middle much. She does every so often, but it's usually plenty of space around her. But one of the things you have to be able to do is control the ball. I agree with Shane in that it's not totally Katie's fault. It's not. I mean, she is the key stone to, to Mark's midfield and if you're an opponent you recognize that and the first thing you're going to do is pressure her so i agree with that but that's also why ona is such a big loss and why it hurts so much and is really damaging our offense because it was recognized early on that getting it through the midfield isn't the most efficient way because we don't have the quick feet and the controlling ball we don't have the quick passing we spend too much time on the ball Great for the likes of, you know, Reading and Leicester and a couple other teams and the lower level teams, okay? But it's not going to work against the top three, all right? Because that's where they're making their bad and brought up because if they were slow on the ball, they wouldn't last in Champions League because Champions League is really, really quick. Um, last point I want to make is that, okay, Against Chelsea, previous, what I did is I looked at the soccer formations, the defensive formations prior to the Chelsea match and then the Chelsea match. And on the Chelsea match, what he did is he had 
uh, Haley and Katie. Um, and I think TJ said it's called uh, a dual six, a, you know, two sixes. So that way it was to help out. And so even that tells me that even Mark knows that this is a situation that he has to work on and he has to come up with a plan for in terms of making the offense work and getting the ball from our end of the pitch to the other end of the pitch in a very efficient manner and that you can't just depend upon one channel, which used to be Ona. So, um, so previous to that, it was always Katie being that controlling um, midfielder in the back of the front. You know, she would she would be positioned in front of the front the the four defensive line. You know, the the back line. So, against big teams, even Mark knows that this isn't a way of moving the ball. That they need help. Okay, I'm not exactly sure Haley was the best person to help Katie, but we also needed Ladd in there to be the defensive mid. And so in a way, her helping with the controlling didn't really help on the defense. So I'm not exactly sure which um, which portion we got dinged on more. Hopefully that made sense. But in my head, it did. I think it made sense to me. I mean, I had all the words in the right order and everything. So it can't be that bad. So <laughs> good job. Good job. Uh, right. I've completed my banner, which is fabulous. So here we go again. So, as I said, last season, draw against Everton, win against, as we lost against Arsenal, win against the Brighton, win against Villa. Our next four league games, not including the WSL Cup, are Arsenal at the Emirates, Aston Villa at Old Trafford, Manchester City at the... Oh, I appear to have... Uh, oh, I haven't written that correctly. So sorry. At uh, the Etihad. <laughs> Hope there's no City fans watching. Wow, what are you doing here? Um... And Liverpool at LSV. Can we beat... Oh, that's terrible. Can we beat seven hour seven point hall? You would never think I teach, would you? This is outrageous. I give yourself an F. Um, but can we beat our seven point hall from the period that we had last season? So looking at those four games, can you see us getting more than seven points out of those four games? Because if we don't, <clears throat> then we're going to find ourselves at roughly the same sort of position as we were at last season um, at that point. So, Ellie, you've been a bit quiet for a while. We'll start with you because I'm sure you know the answer immediately. No doubt the answer from you is it's going to be 12 points out of 12, Barry. No dramas. What are you thinking, Ellie? Well, I think the tightest game will be the one at Emirates, Arsenal. That'll be the tightest game. And the game after that, I think, yeah, we'll get the points. Because I don't know, I just think this season with such a strong, strongest squad and say, just with the players we've got, and obviously they've lost players, but like Marsh and um, Bonnie Shaw, she's been on fire so far for them, and obviously they've got Lauren M and Esme Morgan. I'm not doubting them for a second, but I just think we've got that better depth this season. So yeah, I think. We'll, we'll not easily beat them, but we'll beat them. Then Liverpool, they're back in WSL. So we've not played them yet, but it, it'll be at LSV. Obviously, they'll bring fans. We'll have our fans. So, yeah, that should be an easy game, really. But, yeah, the one I'm just concerned about is um, the next game at the Emirates. But, yeah, I do think we'll get the points. Even if it's 1-0, I'm not bothered. One nil against Arsenal, we'll be fine. There we go. So that's Ellie's take on the matter. Um, Shane is you know, they're, they're big games. They're big games, whichever way you look at it. I mean, I know the Villa games at Old Trafford, but Arsenal and City, two tough games. Even if we think we can beat Villa and Liverpool, um, that means we would need to get two points from Arsenal or City or both. You know, if we drew them both. Um, in order to do better, what do you think? Do you think that's possible? And then also, as a result, do you think that we're top three ready? Do you think that these next four games are going to sort of shape how we how we look to attack that top three and whether or not we can really put our flag in the ground for top three or not? Let me tell you, Barry, it's going to be 12 points out of 12. No dramas. 
That's what you wanted to hear, isn't it? Let's let's be serious. And probably answer both points at the same time, really. Yes, this next run of games, which for context is split up by the Christmas break. You, we play City on the 11th of December. We then don't play Liverpool to the 14th of January. So there is a gap between those. I know there's a couple of cup games floating in and around as well. So if we're being really picky and we're comparing the run of games to last season, you maybe have to count Chelsea just gone in say over the same period maybe but it's will it define top three I, I think it yeah it's it's going to have a massive say because two of those four fixtures are against teams that traditionally have been above us the collectively we have won one game against in the league so they're absolutely going to be having a say on this race for Champions League spots for top three. Again, we, we, you know, we, we talked about the importance of the Arsenal game. Follows an international break where, I saw someone say earlier, Arsenal don't tend to do too pretty after international breaks. The fact is, neither do we. I absolutely loathe the first game back after international break because we just never seem at it. Um, so maybe we're looking at a stalemate in that regard, or ho- hopefully we're more at it than Arsenal are, and we have less jet lag and things like that going on. And you know, no, look, we need to play our game. We need to play our game. We need to win our way. Can't be relying on other teams suffering. Let's put it that way. City's a big one. We own one at the Etihad. They beat us one nil. That was our first game in the WSL. So we own one for that. Um, in fact, we didn't, you know, we didn't score that time either. So we've got to get a goal. We're going to have a pat to our way end, aren't we? You know, that away end's been selling. So there's going to be a decent crowd there. Villa and Liverpool, look, on paper, they're the fixtures you go, six points. Still big, big games in the context of it. Considering we've got Arsenal City in the mix in this run. Villa's at Old Trafford. You don't want to be getting embarrassed at Old Trafford. We don't want to let Villa Fort spoil the party. They can have their little Conti Cup penalty win. You know, they can argue about who takes their penalties for the season and, you know, have, have as many fights as they want on the Poundland car park. But in the league at Old Trafford, they're in our gaff. We need to show them that's our place and you don't come here and you don't get anything. That's what we need to show. That needs to be a commanding victory. And then Liverpool, we obviously haven't played for a couple of seasons in the league. Last time we did, we beat them. 2 0 at our place, I think it was. Wasn't the best of games, but once we scored, I think we were all pretty happy after we had a few minutes of delirium at finally getting the goal that season. I think I described to Deb that time, I think we all looked demonic if there was a camera on us at the time. But yeah, that, that's, Liverpool's always going to be a big game. And, you know, Hopefully they do bring some fans. Hopefully we get some sales. Maybe we can be back in the terrace again because I think that kind of game deserves that kind of crowd. It deserves that kind of atmosphere, be it from us, be it from both teams, or both sets of fans. You know, the, those are the big games in football that you want to be involved in. But from our point of view, we, we have to win. So I want 12 points out of 12. Can we get that? Yes, we can. But it's not a certainty. Okay, very Barack Obama there at the end. Can we do it? Yes, we can. Either that or Bob the Builder. One of the two. I can't quite think which one. With that hat, probably more Bob the Builder. Depends on the day of the week. <laughs> um, Martin, we've been speaking a lot about progress. We've been speaking a lot about all of that. Ultimately, I, I want to ask you straight up, really. Do you think we're going to make the top three based on what you've seen so far? Do you hold out? Not hope. Do you think it's realistic that we can be a top three contender still this season? And do you think, because these are three very big games for us, you know, the, the fact that not just who they're against, but the fact that we're going to the Emirates, Etihad and Old Trafford, that's three games on the trot for the women's team that, bearing in mind, previously they'd be played at the Academy Stadium, Boreham Wood and NSV, which 
together probably has an attendance of around about 30,000 ish, maybe at its very best. We're now going to have potentially that just in one of the games now, alone all three. So, do you think we've got that opportunity to get those points in the bag? Can we get more than seven out of those four games? And do we need more than seven if we're going to be realistic about top three? I think mathematically, our best shot is that we tie with City for third and we beat them for third place in gold differential. That's what I think. And that's one of the reasons why I was so upset about oh, us do not that to me, Marty. Um, I think that Liverpool is going to be tough because it is, uh, I believe that it is a um, Yankee Red Sox type match. Yes. So uh, Liverpool beat Chelsea. They uh, hung in there. They should have gotten a draw out of their last match. And they're very furious over the fact that they didn't. Uh, they lost one of their key um strikers early on in that second week i think it was in the second match week um and so they are pretty much so hungry that i think they would maul anybody they will go maul anybody in front of them uh so they're going to be tough um uh, aston villa they signed rachel daly they got layman so they actually have an offense Okay, they are playing pretty good defense and they can catch you by surprise if they play it smartly. And Carla Ward is a very, very man, a good manager in terms of strategy. And I think that she will play it very, very smartly. So we have to be, you know, we really have to clean up the, you know, errors that we're making and getting away with. Um, City. Well, for gosh sakes, I thought we should have beat them last year, okay? And I was furious about that. And you know how furious I was because I went on for months and months and years on that one. Um, and I'm still, if you really get me talking about that match, I will, uh, you know, it'll all come back. Um, I think we could take a point off a of city because it's a derby and everybody will be up for it. But I think it's going to be, it's, I do not think we'll beat them in their home stadium. I do think we could draw with them, though. I do think we could draw. Um, we would need them to make a big error. Uh, you know, one of those, you know, pass out of the back type errors and, and uh, we take advantage of it and actually score on, you know. Uh, Arsenal going into the Emirates. Um, do I think we'll get three? No, I don't think we'll get three. Might get one. I don't think we'll get three. So, um, so I think it sounded like most of us are saying seven or eight points here is is realistic. That seems where you're going there, Marty. Yeah, about seven or eight points. I want to see goal differential. I want to see us beat up on the little guy. Okay, <laughs> I want to see. I want to see double digits. Give me double digits. <laughs> Okay. So that's a 10 nil against City. Everybody then, yeah. scores. Yeah. Ian Earp <laughs> scores. Okay. <laughs> well, I can confirm, far be it for me to do that, but I can confirm that our goal differential uh, as we speak is 12. So we are in double digits at the moment. It's it's all good. Uh, and with regards to Manchester City, they are currently on eight. So our goal difference is currently four better than Manchester City. The problem we've got, based on what you're just saying there, Marty, is that the next game is Arsenal, obviously. If we don't win that, that will have an impact on the goal difference. Uh, we then got Villa, though, which gives us a chance to try and top back up again before going to City. Uh, and then hopefully Liverpool we top back on again uh, with nine goals and a merry Patrick. So these are the type of things we hope for against uh, the lovely people from Liverpool. But there you go. Seven or eight points. Either way, whichever way we look at it, the points... It's just madness at the moment. If we were to beat Arsenal, we'd go on to 18 points along with them and Chelsea could potentially go three points clearer, but everybody would still have a game in hand over Chelsea. Of course, with the Villa game coming up and then City, City are three points behind us. We could come out of these four games, technically, we could come out of these four games with the top three or four teams all level on points, which would be stunning, to be honest with you, when you consider what the WSL, uh, WSL has been like over the last 10, 20, well, not 20 years, 
and I think it's not quite that old, but certainly for the last decade. So there we go. We are nearly out of time, boys and girls, nearly out of time. But I do want us to finish on one more topic, which was, I wouldn't quite say controversial, but certainly brought up a lot of uh, conversation on the Monday. And that was about players that potentially look like they're being phased out. Maybe players that we may not see at Manchester United um, this time next season, potentially. Um, we had a little bit of a, a chitter-chatter uh, amongst the hierarchy here at all for United WFC. Uh, I don't know if anyone's not sure about that. That was just Connor and I had a little chat, basically, over a WhatsApp group. I like to make it sound better than it was. Um, and we tried to try with some names. Obviously, Fuso and Hanson currently out on loan. Vilda Barisa and Tunkara not seeming able to get minutes at the moment. And Adriana Leon certainly not getting as many minutes. So, Ellie, out of those players, are there any there that you fear for moving into the rest of this season and beyond? Fuso and Hansen, because personally, I don't, I don't, I don't see them two coming back because we've got too much depth, and I think like Curse is enjoying his time at Aston Villa. She's getting more game time than she did at United because like last season we all we all know she didn't really get. That much game time. Same with Fuse. I think she's smashing it. Where I don't know where she is. I think some, yeah, wherever she is, though, she's smashing it there. And she's getting um, she's getting minutes there. She didn't really, she didn't get any minutes really for us. She was on always on the bench. Uh, and Toon Car, but that's one play I don't even know. I've not even seen her yet on the pitch. I thought with. We borrowed for to get minutes on the pitch. We've not seen her once, and then yeah, Rose Barry. She's a concern as well because I know I know how much of a talented footballer she is, but she's just not getting the minute minutes either. So I'm I'm just concerned about some of these players that come the end of the season. They'll get fed up of not getting in amount of minutes, and then what they want to leave because they're not getting the minutes. So yeah, I I feel so. Sorry for Hanson now because she's enjoying her time at Aston Villa now. So I doubt she she'd want. I know she loves United, but I doubt she want to come back and then not get the minutes. You know, I'm saying like she she's getting at Villa. She's getting loads of minutes at Villa. And she's shining for them. So yeah, I don't I, I don't see a way back for her really. Coming back to United. Fair points, young Ellie. Shane, any people on the list there? Any players that aren't on the list that you're maybe, I want to say fearing for because that's the wrong sort of words, but any players there that you think are, are not looking like they might be in Mark Skinner's plans? There we go, that was a nice way of putting it. Um, oh, yeah, I mean, look, the, the obvious one's Vilder, isn't it? You know, there's cup, cup games aside, there's not been many minutes there. Um, this goes back to last season as well, um, and I know, I know there's, you know, we're getting closer to January, and rumours are starting up, and you know, rumours will be rumours until they're facts and truth. But it's not looking good, shall we say? You know, from from a fan perspective, you know, if she if she can't get some minutes against Chelsea when we're losing to try and come on and affect the game, then when are you going to get minutes? You know. It, it, even other teams we've played, you know, I can't really remember when she did get minutes other than against Durham. Or, um, maybe did she come on against Leicester or Brighton, maybe towards the end, but, you know, not enough time to have that much of a meaningful effect. So I, I think she's probably the most likely to be off. Um, touching on Hanson, I'm, I'm 50 50 on because th th there was a lot of speak when she was out on loan and there was a lot of blame put on Mark Skinner's head on it which was, you know, oh, he doesn't like her. And I think I saw one comment on if he doesn't allow her to play for Villa against us in the Cup, then he's scared of her. I mean, aside from the, the rules in, in this league and game that lone players don't play against their parent clubs without expressly written permission, you know, I don't think there's a scared thing there. But Kirsty has come out and said herself, I think it was an interview of Emma Sanders for BBC, that... The conversation she's had with Mark Skinner start of this season and last season it, it was with her confidence. He wants to see a confident Kirsty Hansen playing and he slash we didn't see that last season. 
So she's going to learn to get minutes, play regularly, build a confidence back up and show what kind of player she can be. And if she shows that well enough, then Mark's got to seriously consider, you know, is there a place for her in that team then? Is there a place for a confident and capable Kirsty Hansen? And if there isn't, then he has to move her on because that's the fairest thing to do for her and for the team. Because otherwise, why would you bring someone back in to then go, right, you've had a season play and I'm going to give you a season off again? You just wouldn't do it. It wouldn't make sense. Um, so that's my piece on Hanson anyway. The the other concerning ones, really, and I, I don't think we can talk about do they have a place in the team or, or as such because we've just brought them in. But there's two, there's Tunkara and there's Adriana Leon. Um, now, Tunkara, I guess, are we just... Are we integrating her? Come from abroad, you know, maybe not known too many of the players that are in the squad. And I mean, I think she played briefly with Jade Moore at Atletico Madrid. Um, so I'll lean towards this is an integration thing why right? she's not featuring much at the moment. Although I think there have been opportunities to use her. We'll, we'll leave that one at that. Leon's the puzzling one because she's an attacker. There's times where we've needed maybe an extra attacker or to swap out an attacker on a like flight basis and she could have come on and wasn't. Leicester away was a really big highlight for me that she was warming up for the best part of 70 minutes before half-time, during and after and didn't get on the pitch at all. And again, Sunday, I think there was, there was when she came on, it was almost a Mark's way of saying, we're going to go for this, we're going to try and pull the game back. But I don't think the 90-odd minute was the time to have done that. I think that should have been maybe the swap for Russo. You know, and that's that's a separate matter, though. But th- those are the two that I think uh, maybe I'd highlight as a bit of a concern at the moment, Tunkara and Leon. Yes, I think, personally, I think I'd agree with you. I think Leon and Tunkara, puzzling ones. Very puzzling indeed. And I, I made no secret of the fact that I was quite surprised uh, to see Lucy Staniforth coming on when we had people like Adrian Leon on the bench and Lord of a reset who could potentially have come on to change the game. Um, Marty, any players that you are fearful for? And if you say Katie Zeller, I'm kicking you out. No, I think Katie's there in concrete. Okay. I, I think, I think everyone else will go before Katie. Okay. Even as much as I think that if he swapped Katie out, um, at least gave her fresh legs. Okay. At the end of a match. That would be helpful for the team overall. Um, I think uh, VBR is gone. Okay, I think I think she'll jump as soon as she can jump, and I think she ought to. And I wish her best of luck. I don't think uh, Kirsty Hansen will be back with the club at all. I think what she'll do is she'll find she really enjoys life at Aston Villa, getting the minutes and playing under Wardy. Um, I think that's a good spot for her. She's doing very very well, and she's very appreciated, and that's key. Because even when she was here, you could talk confidence all you want. He either likes him or he doesn't like him. Jackie Gronin had the most confidence in the world and was could boss the midfield like anybody out there, either internationally or in club. He just didn't want her, you know. So you know, you you there's there's a very um, key tether between a player and the manager, and if that tether works. It's a win-win. If the tether doesn't work, somebody's gonna. You just have to move on. You take you you know you take your wins, and you move on, and you get other wins. Okay, and that's you can see that all through soccer, uh, football, whatever you call it. Um, you can just see that. You can see it in any sport. Okay, some players play really really well under certain managers. Other players, you know, they have to get used to them, and they're either there for their reputation or they deliver. Or, or they can conform. And in other cases, they just don't find a place where the manager just, just sees a view differently. He wants to go his own way, and that's fine. He, they're the one, he's the one who got brought in, okay? And he's the one that's his club. So he can very well do that. Uh, Leon makes no sense to me. She is a uh, very good player. She plays extremely well internationally. Uh, club for whatever reason I haven't seen her deliver. On the other hand, she was on the she was on the pitch like a couple of minutes and scored a goal. Not this past time, but you know previously. Um, I like Leon over Nikita Paris. 
uh, mainly because Leon finds creases in the defense. Whereas Nikita Paris uh, does have speed, she will get in your face and she's like a little pit bull terrier, okay? When it comes to either getting the ball or charging the defense, if the defense has the ball to delay things, and she's great at that. But I've never seen her as being a, a, um, a money in the bank striker, okay? Russo is. Tooney has been. Um, you know, it, it's the uh, Sam Kerr is. Okay, it's like you give them the ball and they will put it in the back of the net. And I've never seen Paris is very much hit and miss. So uh, Leon is very, very good. The only problem I have with Leon is she's short. You know, she's as short as Barry. Um, and when it comes to set pieces, that becomes a bit of an issue. So you have to take what she can give you. But she finds creases. She has depth you know, depth of touch, you know, like, like just the slight touches in order to get it through. Um, she can't, in terms of muscling the ball, I'm trying to think she, she can hold her own, but she will get pushed off the ball. And maybe that's why he doesn't put her in there because Paris will hang in there and won't get pushed off the ball. Okay. That that's maybe that's the reason why he chooses Paris over Leon. But I do think she she has the right to earn minutes. Okay, I I really do, and I'm I'm a little disappointed in that. Uh, Tankara, I don't know where you know like like let's play the game of where in the world is Tankara and and why is she not playing? Um, and why are we not seeing her in that back four? You know, on that four line. So, um, I look forward to seeing Tukara out on the pitch <laughs> soon, coming, okay? I look forward to that. That's about all I can say, okay? I can confirm I have seen Tunkara on numerous occasions. She does exist. She's not a figment of our imagination. Uh, we didn't just buy a name. We definitely got a player. So we've got VBR seems underrated to you guys. Like, you know what? I do feel like it's not necessarily underratedness because – has she always come on and 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 dictated a game, changed the game? I haven't really seen that since last season from her, I think, to be honest with you, Sang. But what I would also say is, is that of our current crop of midfielders, she would be one of the first names that I would be considering bringing on as a sub if the initial trio of players were not doing the job that I would be expecting of them as a player for Manchester United Football Club. So that's kind of where we are on that one. Um, height, <clears throat> I mean, height does have a bit to do with it uh, as does age and weight um you know i'm five foot two i used to have a leap on me like a salmon now i'm lucky if i can jump higher than you know a few centimeters off the ground so you know it, it's tough it's tough uh and tunkara in who's out well isn't that the question and that is why mark skinner is paid the big bucks and why we just come here for a little giggle uh marty wants to add something more i can give you 60 seconds, Marty. Okay, it's exactly what that question was, is if you put in BBR, where would she be? She's mainly an attacking midfielder. Are you going to take Tooney out? She scores goals, right? She passes and scores goals, but she's not a controlling midfielder. So who would you be sub for? Katie doesn't get sub for, and I do think that's a bit something that Mark has to think about. I'm done. Okay, that's good. I was just checking. Didn't wanna, <laughs> I didn't want to jump in and have you. <clears throat> when I, when I get, jump in again so there we go listen hey we covered everything i thought we were going to cover we managed to do a fantastic show i think it's been well enjoyed if you haven't already click the like button subscribe uh and make sure you are following these guys all the way around here marty funk is always uh somebody with all their own opinions and perfectly happy to back them up and we've always loved always love having marty on the show shane of course Excellent opinions from him as well. And, of course, Ellie down there has been superb. And, yes, yes, saying this is exactly what I can do. The leap in salmon. Absolutely. That is I flipping about there. So, was it, oh, yes, this is true. Yes, I used to rival Ronaldo for his leap. That's absolutely true. I once went to the head of Yeah. No, it's a true story. I did. I went up for a header with Ronaldo and he only won because he had hair. So that was it. I'd be right there. It was a real shame, actually. A real shame. Uh, and David Beckham, that little thing on his head, 
It's nothing to do with Alex Ferguson in his boot. That was me going up for a header with him. So there you go, you see. Like a salmon. Uh, that descended into something I wasn't expecting. So it's the international break. Here at Orphe United, we hate the international break. Uh, but regardless, we've worked really hard to try and find some bits and pieces that we'll be able to throw in there. We have the fans forum today. I'm sure there's going to be lots more coming up. We are still hoping uh, to get David Astelin, who is an analyst, and he is going to be having that conversation, hopefully with Connor, and that should be available sometime over the next seven days. Um, if you're not sure why that hasn't appeared yet, at Connor Roberts, throw that at him and ask the question, or at Wolf United WFC, and they will answer that question for you. Nothing to do with me. That's not my gig, baby. Uh, Monday, we will definitely be back on Monday. Hopefully, it will be with one of our fabulous journalist friends. But if not, you'll have to make do with me, Charlie and Connor. Um, just chatting rubbish, probably, really, to be honest with you. But you never know. There might be something exciting like there was last week. And, of course, next Wednesday, I shall be back here live from Stevenage with another fans forum uh, where, hopefully, we'll get some guests who are just as good as the three that we've had tonight if not better, if such a thing exists. So thank you again to you three. Thank you to everyone in the comments. I hope you'll have a pleasant few days. Enjoy your weekend without United Women. And we'll see you next week.